Hello everyone and welcome back to my KSP tutorial series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 beta. We're starting in sandbox mode this time because I want to discuss docking before we get to the Mars mission. We are going to attempt to land a probe on Mars, but first I don't think we're going to be getting to docking very soon unless we do it in sandbox mode. So I've imported a station module. This is actually my typical station launch setup where I launch the station plus the station's own fuel tanks as uh, as the launcher. Basically, we burn all the fuel in the station's fuel tanks in order to get it to orbit. So all of this get, gets into orbit. It's single stage to orbit. But the station will then have all of its fuel tanks so that it can refuel missions. And so that's my typical way of launching the first module of a space station. And it's a nice little streamlined build. Uh, plenty of room for Kerbals, as you can see and uh, linking up other facilities. So we're going to launch this as a target for our docking and rendezvous tutorial. Okay, so let me just quickly get through this and then I'll see you with the craft that will dock with it. Oh, and just to be clear, uh, because I'm going to try and do this as a difficult test rather than the easiest possible situation because of course we could do the easiest possible situation and that might not be as instructive. So I'll try and do a relatively difficult uh, rendezvous and docking uh, situation. And so I'm going to put this station into an inclined orbit instead of just an equatorial orbit. So that'll be a little bit more difficult and uh, give a more thorough explanation of how to do these things. Uh, for instance, if you're trying to rendezvous with a, a spacecraft around the moon which might not be in an equatorial orbit, how to do that. So, uh, we'll be tilting, let's say, maybe to, uh, well, somewhere between 0 and 45. I, I don't want to go too extreme on this. I don't know if it has enough fuel to actually get into a really extreme inclined orbit right now. Okay, I've just quickly placed it into a 110 by 92 orbit. And so, that's going to make it a little bit interesting. Inclined as you see it, uh, about 20 about twenty degrees. And let's extend solar panels. There aren't any lights on this docking port, but that'll be fine. So yeah, uh, we'll just have it uh, as it is in whatever orientation it is because uh, we want an arbitrary orientation to see if we can dock with it. So this is the challenge. and. Now the thing is that when we launch our other craft that's going to dock with it, we want the KSC to be under this orbit. Uh, the reason being that let's say we launch, let, let's time warp a little bit to make this clear. Okay, now I think uh, it's relatively clear. Let's say we launch right now and we uh, ha try to match the inclination on launch. So we go down 20 degrees. You'll see that we're, we're not going to be really matching the orbit of the station at all we're going to be have this little gap here and that is the problem that's why you want to launch at this uh, when you're under the orbit of your target so we'll keep that in mind we'll probably uh, wait till we're on the opposite side as uh, we're getting into nighttime here alright but let me build our spacecraft to dock with the station okay so here's our simple crew transfer vehicle what we've got is the pod is uh, fully equipped with monopropellant and we've got an extra monopropellant tank here even though the pod itself has 30 units and that's mainly because we've got these little monopropellant engines here uh, which will be used uh, during the landing so we'll try and make... Uh, I'm not going to do the landing in this episode this is just going to be uh, rendezvous and docking but in principle uh, you could do landing with this and the craft itself is 6.6 .6 tons uh, and these engines generate uh, equip, uh, enough for 8 tons so it can make a soft landing. Okay, It's, it's got parachutes just in case as well. Uh, plenty of battery power, of course the RCS which we need for the docking and we'll talk about all that. Lights, very important, and the docking port. So yep, uh, very much fully equipped and otherwise uh, the rest of the launch is very simple. There's a poodle here, there's a skipper down here and that is it. So this should be able to rendezvous just fine with our station. So let's get to it. Actually, hold on a sec. I have been meaning to slap on a solar panel, so let's do that. Okay, that works. 
All right, now let's go. So as advertised, we are going to wait until the appropriate timing, our launch window. And so we're going to just go through the day. Could have launched in the nighttime side. Uh, we hit the orbit of the station twice every day. We want the station to be a little bit behind us. because it's going very very fast and it'll catch up to us so this looks like the optimal situation let's set the station as a target I'm gonna assume you've unlocked uh, maneuver nodes by this point though uh, you can watch one of the earlier videos where I rescue uh, Kerbal if you don't have maneuver nodes unlocked and that's pretty much the similar thing to approaching a target like that alright here we go So now we are matching inclinations. So right now we're 21.1 degrees off. And again, if you're in a wildly different orbit, uh, you'll have to do what I did in the episode where we rescued a Kerbal to try and match orbits. Or you could just use the maneuver node system. I'll, I'll show you a little bit of that this time as well. The maneuver node system could do with a little bit of explaining. Our target is behind us, but you can see the pink marker there shows uh, where it's uh, that that's the opposite trajectory the other marker the other pink marker is towards it that this marker is away from it but it'll give us an idea where we need to aim to okay set and ignite you can see right now our orbit is still off it's gonna be off um, we should have uh, done it a little bit earlier than we ended up doing we need to head further south by the look of things. I should go higher. Okay, that was the minimum. Around about 2.6, 2.7 ish. So now what we have here is the target position at intersect is here and we're gonna be ahead of it. Okay, so let's let's move a little bit higher. Remember, uh, inner orbits are faster, and so if the target position is behind us and we're going to be ahead of it, we need to go higher. It's getting closer. That'll do for now. I'm going to make an adjustment here at this descending node. So we're not fully in orbit yet, by the way. Uh, we still need to close to apoapsis and then uh, circularize, or at least match orbits with our target. But we are headed up, and we need to correct this uh, 2.8 degrees anyway. So this is the descending node, so we correct it by lifting it up using the upper pink marker and here you see that it is 0.1 and 0 0.0 okay at that same location where we correct our inclination we can also lift up our periapsis uh, and let's see let's not go too far it looks like we're still going to be ahead of our target so what we want is an orbit that is just a bit higher overall and so you see here here we match the targets orbit on this side we have a higher orbit and this will allow the target to catch up with us okay so we've got a fair correction here plenty of fuel to do it with so ideally what you'd want is you would want to hit the station right off uh, like right on ascent you would meet up with the station you'd hit its orbit exactly but 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 that takes practice or calculation okay so we still got a point three degrees hmm that's weird We're not too far off right now. 
we are 60 kilometers. Uh, that is the descending node. So I'm going to point north, point north, and do a little bit of a correction here. Okay, now we're at zero. Okay, so here we see target position. So the target is going to be way ahead of us, actually. So target position is behind us, but as we go around, these pink markers indicate that the target is going to be ahead of us. See target position and intersect 2 here, and intersect 2 is there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that we are too high on the apoapsis side. And in that case, we don't really need target here. We need orbit. I'm going to retro burn and you'll see that retro burning is now in line with our target because it's right behind us. Uh, let's retro burn and we're going to retro burn until the, these pink markers line up. Now you could do this all with more maneuver nodes. You could see how much you need to burn to get it all lined up. But here I am going to be satisfied with, well, a point 0.8 is not bad. I clearly could get 0.5 or even less probably, but 0.8 will give us time to talk about things. Okay, so we're going to meet up with the station there. We'll stick to this map because otherwise we're not going to know how long it is until we meet up with the station. You can see it's going to be on the dark side, which, which will be instructive. Okay, here we have our target and the first thing it automatically switches you to the target indicator here as you near it and that's fine this time we want to aim for the retrograde marker not the pink opposite direction marker and we are going to well let's wait till it gets uh, we said 0.8 right was its closest approach let's wait a little bit Okay, now it's coming close to its closest approach, and I'm going to get rid of our relative velocity with respect to the target. Which means going to zero. Mm, that's too far. Okay, uh, from here on, we are going to use the RCS system. Now, it would be best if I dumped the service module, because the RCS system isn't balanced around it. But let's say you have misplaced your RCS ports which is a possibility and it's not balanced which is fine that is also not a problem so I'm pushing the H key to move forward and the N key to move back I take off RCS when I turn here like this because it's a waste of RCS to use it for that RCS back on press 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 H Okay, now we turn towards target. Should at this point open the dock import shield. Target is a kilometer away. And here I would approach, let's say, two meters per second. Now you'll see that the prograde marker isn't matching up with the target marker, so I'm going to press K to lift it up, press J to move it to the left, a little bit more K, a little bit more J, now we're lined up. We've used six units of propellant so far. The the lights we have on, assuming they're not completely blocked by, well this one seems to be clear of the docking port shield, um, they have a range of about 400 meters. So we're going to have the station lit up as it gets within 400 meters or so. Now you see our prograde vector has deviated because our orbits are not exactly the same as the target's orbit. And so uh, don't do it too much, but if it goes too far for your comfort zone, you can just use uh, I, J, K, L to move it. So K to move it up, L to move it down, J to move it to the left, and L to move it to the right. It's important to be patient. It's preferable to use 
time warp rather than actually go faster. Remember, going faster means you're going to burn more fuel because you're going to have to cancel all that velocity out anyway. So better to go slower and use time warp than go faster and have to use extra fuel. Okay, now the station module is moving away because the prograde vector has moved off. That's fine. When that happens, turn to the negative relative velocity marker. Remember, this is not your retrograde marker. This is a marker relative to the station, not relative to your orbit. So very important to make that distinction. And we're going to use RCS. We could use the RCS engines, but anyway, we, we're going to use RCS here. And cancel out this direction. Don't have to do it all the way because we're just going to point at the station and once again thrust towards it. Here maybe one meter per second is sufficient and I'm going to press L to bring that program marker down and J to move it to the side. Okay, our shield is open. I'm going to try to dock on the side of the station rather than the front has a docking port and then the, there's also a docking port on the side. I'm gonna try and dock on the side. I'm not going to maneuver the station at all. Normally when I dock I will maneuver the other side in order to line up with me. That's easier. So you can just uh, jump to this. So here I am. I could target the crew transfer vehicle and then I can turn the station so I can say control from here for instance or more appropriately the target is probably this one. Control from here and now you can see where where the other vehicle is coming in and I could turn this station to face it but let's not. In fact uh, you know this approach is a little bit too easy aiming for that docking port. Let's try something a little bit harder. Let's say I, I aim for this one in fact because let's make sure the lights are on at least that'll take a little bit more maneuvering because the way we are we're already headed for that docking port and that's not going to be, be very instructive so here we are approaching the station there's no need to correct anything at this point one thing you might want to do is say control from here now it's not going to make too much of a difference the way this is lined up, but as you saw with the station, it makes a lot of difference if the port in question is far away from where the original command module was and in a different orientation. You'll notice I'm not rushing to correct anything, even though the program marker has deviated from the target. I'm not rushing to correct that as long as we're moving towards the station. You can do that if you like, and it'll get you closer to the station. But since we are not lined up with the docking port, there's no point. If uh, you can turn your target, for instance, if it's another spacecraft and you can turn it towards you, then then you might, might as well keep the program marker lined up so that uh, you just approach quickly and easily. But we're going to have to do some other maneuvering because we're not turning the target. All right, so what we are going to do is... Well, we don't really need to turn towards the negative relative velocity marker. Let's turn towards the prograde marker, which is what we're facing right now, and and just press N to burn the opposite direction. That's one thing you can do with RCS. You don't always have to turn towards a marker. You can just uh, use N to go in the opposite direction. Now, here you can see our lights are shining on the station. If we deflect away, station darker, point towards the station is lighter now paying close attention now uh, people advise chase camera different camera views I'm just gonna do it in arbitrary camera because that's what I'm used to got RCS and here you notice J pushes us in this direction towards this side L is pushing us towards that direction. Now we want to orient ourselves so that that's going to be a little bit more consistent with the way the station is. The station you know is a little bit like this. So L, it's, it's not too far off. Let's see J J. Okay so this looks like if I press J 
I'm going to be moving towards this side, which is a want where I want to be because the the actual docking port is on this side. So let me just push J a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna push H to continue moving towards the station. So you can see the program marker shows me going a little bit to the left, and but also towards the station. You gotta want to give yourself a little bit of room from the front of the station or, the, or whatever your docking port happens to be. But you can see we want to keep in line. Right now we're sort of in the same plane as the station in this plane. You're gonna have to think of little flat surfaces. So you can think of a table and the thing is the station trunk if you will, this portion is on the same table as we are or roughly close to it. Okay, our lights are no longer hitting the station very well so I think maybe we should push, press L to cancel out that left velocity and now we'll just head a little bit more towards the station. Now what you want to do is wait until the pink marker is 90 degrees away from you because that'll mean that you're headed uh, straight in this direction and you gotta make a 90 degree turn to face the docking port. This is very similar to the way aircrafts have maneuvered. Uh, you'll wait until you're 90 degrees to make a 90 degree turn to face your uh, runway. Similar way of lining up. Okay, I think uh, the, the target marker is getting close. Now, I'm, I notice I'm not changing the direction I'm moving in as I turn because I've got RCS off. But here I'm lining up, I'm going to put RCS on and now I'm going to kill my motion towards the left and I'm going to slow down, Oop, no not go up, go down, go down, go down, go down, go down. Slow down and continue moving towards the right. Alright, so now we're we're close but not we're not quite there. Clearly the docking port is to the left, and so I'm going to press J a little bit more to get us moving to the left. The marker seems a little bit down, so I'm going to press K once to bring it up. And i got to press L to kill my leftward velocity. We're a little bit close for my comfort, honestly. But let's try it. Okay, we are now going forward towards the target. RCS off so I can line up properly without moving, changing my velocity. Looks like we're a little bit to the right of it, so let's move to the left. Just a tidbit. And we need to be down a bit. Okay, let's line up. Okay, we're going a little bit too fast here. And to slow down, of course. Up, docking port magnetism, RCS off, SAS off, let the docking ports do their thing, and we're connected. And so there you have it. Um, a lot of it is practice. Be patient, go slowly. I think of flat surfaces and try to line up with those flat surfaces. First, thing, uh, get yourself on the same table, if you will, as the station and orient the thrusters in relation to that. You can use different camera views if you like, but it's not necessary. You can just rotate your craft to make sure that the thrusters are firing in the direction that you want. So making sure that J is firing so that you move to the left and L is firing so that you move to the right with respect to the station. Now, uh, probably made it look easy. Um, the the probably the only more complicated situation is if the target is spinning and spinning out of your control. Uh, the the cheat way of doing that, uh, probably the only way of doing that, really is to is to uh, use time warp. Uh, if it's spinning out of control, uh, normally in real life they wouldn't dock with it. 
uh, there's no way you can dock with something that's spinning out of control. You at least need the computers on board to target the stabilized thing before you attempt a docking. They're not going to attempt a docking when it's spinning out of control. I've had the spinning out of control thing before, and ultimately the only thing that could help is by uh, time warping to stabilize it. So, uh, I think that's it for this docking tutorial, but if you have any further questions, anything I need to clarify about how to do this, uh, please ask them in the comment section below and we'll jump back into this and see what uh, we can do to clarify those points. Alright, so now, back to career mode and our Mars mission. I said Mars, didn't I? I meant Duna, of course. We are going to attempt to land on Duna. We have a contract for that. Land on Duna, transmit or recover scientific data from Duna. And what I need to do is add a parachute to this. Now, how's our... Well, we're at the part limit, but that was because we added an extra antenna. So all I need to do is take off an antenna. Let's make sure we have that. Okay, so now we have 29 out of 30 parts, and we can add a parachute. And the reason you want to add a parachute is because Duna has an atmosphere, and the parachute can help slow us down. Um, I usually hate using the parachute because it messes me up a little bit and uh, probably we'll get to that part. Um, but for now we'll go with this. I think this should have enough delta V. We're about to find out. We have enough fun buffer just in case. So we're going to call this Duna Lander 1. What we need once again is the right trajectory to hit Duna and that means lining up with the phase angle 45 degrees roughly it's gonna take us the better part of the year okay that looks about 45 degrees right there now notice that the orbits aren't exactly circular Duna does have a little bit of eccentricity you can see that Duna is further away from Kerbin on this side and closer to Kerbin on this side so it's not really supposed to be exactly 45, uh, exactly what you calculate with the phase angle equation uh, because that's just an approximation for circular orbits. There is a more comp complicated equation if you want to do it for any orbit, but I'm not going to do that. Let's just launch and we'll adjust on the way. Okay, here we are. SAS on, throttle is up, and without further ado, wait, uh, yeah, we've got solar panelry, we've got all sorts of stuff. So yeah, let's launch. Oh, one thing I could have done was add more fuel to this stage. Uh, well, no, I guess I couldn't. Well, no, I could have, because uh, we don't have the 18 ton limit. Could have added just a larger tank. This thing can carry up to maybe... Yeah, it's, uh, 18 tons is pretty close to its limit. Um, with the atmosphere and all, I'd say you could go up to 19 tons, but that's pushing it. I'm talking about just having the one engine. We haven't even gone to complex staging and multiple engines and all that yet. Ma amazing, we've got a lot of stuff to cover still. I probably don't make the point uh, often enough, but the uh, way to get your best efficiency is to smoothly rotate the craft down matching the prograde vector as much as possible and that's going to become very important in version 1.0 when uh, we have real aerodynamics or semi-real aerodynamics and in that case deviating too much from the prograde vector is going to cause your craft to spin out badly once again I am going to keep things very tight in fact this end is probably still going to be in the atmosphere because of our weird second stage there. Probably should slap on some radio rockets to it just to keep it going a little bit better. But anyway, here we go. But of course the reason I didn't do that is because of the part limit. So, could upgrade the VAB, probably should. Okay, let's hold on a sec. Let's see how we're going to transfer to Duna and whether we really need to raise our orbit anymore. Set Duna's target. And we want our outward trajectory going in this direction. So here, we've got our apoapsis here. So 
even though our periapsis is low, we'll just do the burn from here. And I'll be nice and safely in space. That's probably too much velocity. That's nice and lined up. Looks like we need a little bit more. Gotta meet it down there again. Okay, well, that'll do it. Not gonna fine tune it right now. Let's just uh, go with this trajectory. So again, uh, we've we've obviously boosted our orbit beyond the atmosphere finally, and out it goes. This close, we should take a look at what's going on. Okay, and with some judicious amount of burning, careful use of the throttle, we're about 4,000 kilometers away, so that's increasing for some reason. Uh, this far away, there's a lot of rounding errors. Let's wait until we get into interplanetary space, and then I'll do a mid-course plane change at this ascending node. So now in interplanetary space, it says I've got 9,580 kilometers away from Tuna, but we'll soon fix that. Not, not on the purple orbit. We have to make sure that we're on the little blue orbit. The purple orbit is after we pass Duna. So... Make sure it's the same amount of time. 12 days sounds about right. It's just a game of waiting to see where my... So the top periapsis there is what I currently have and the bottom one is what I'm going to have if I do this burn. And I'm just trying to minimize that bottom number. We could probably engineer a crash course with Duna right now. But I think I'll take 214 kilometers and Call that all right. Notice it only takes 10.5 meters per second, and that's the benefit from doing these of course plane changes. Okay, we are pointed up at the maneuver node, and whoa, why is it 35 suddenly? That was 10. Weird things. What the heck went on with this? Okay, uh, things have gone bad suddenly. Well, our, our inclination is fine, it's just that this has gone all... Something went wrong. That is fine, I'll just make a correction. And instead of time warping, I'll make the correction now. Don't trust it anymore. Okay, that should be close enough to do enough for our purposes. Okay, hopefully the game is not gonna mess me up too much. Let's see. Okay, we are in the Duna system. This is our approach. Let's focus on Duna actually. Can we? Ah, oh, there we go. Ike is complicated, complicating things. Let's see what we can do about that. I think 13 kilometers is safe. We don't have to fine tune it using the maneuver node. We can just do it as part of the burn. So it's just uh, this marker here, and we'll do it now because it'll, it'll cost less than the 28.3 we see there. Let's see it happen. Okay, that's it. And instead of costing 20, 28, was it? It was about 1 meter per second. Alright, so we're going to pass by Ike. Let's go north-south again. Okay, here we go. We're going to get an Ike encounter soon. Just a high flyby of Ike. As soon as we have Ike 
sphere of influence, which we have, I'm going to now adjust our orbit a little bit more. So not che checking error breaking calculator this time, just going for 13 kilometers. I think that should be okay. If it ends up bringing us straight down, well, that'll serve our purposes. It actually looks like if it does bring us straight down, it'll probably bring us down on the bright side. We'll pass the dark side of the planet. Gonna get any heating at all? Doesn't look like it. Nope, didn't get too hot at all. Now, will it bring us into orbit or are we gonna have to do something manually? Nah, no, we're not even getting into orbit. This is too high for this one. I guess we're coming in a little bit faster than the previous mission. So, let me use some thrust to bring us into orbit. Not the best thing to do. Ooh, weird Ike perturbations. Gotta avoid those. Make sure you're in a low enough orbit to avoid Ike. Gotta raise my periapsis on the apoapsis side. This is a little bit too low. Okay, I'm close enough to apoapsis. Point prograde, and I'm going to lift my periapsis just a little bit. And that's because I want the atmosphere to still attempt to bring me down. I don't want to use my engine in order to bring this apoapsis down. And so I'm going to give the, the atmosphere another shot. And if it decides to bring me down to a landing, that, that'll be fine. Uh, let, let's go a little bit higher, though. I don't want to go down too quickly. Now, we don't seem to be exposing our solar panels very well. Let's get some recharge done. Forget where we've done the goo containers. Uh, wait till we're in the atmosphere. Oh, that's a little bit quicker than I expected. We might be landing this time. Yep, I think we're going to land this time. Okay, here we go. This is now the highest we're going to get, and it's bringing us down. So, let's prepare properly for this. Landing gear down. Sorry it's in the dark. So let's try to avoid that, but Dawn's coming up. Got to aim a little bit high. Ah, it's still got us on the dark side. Let's try and fix that right now. Uh, wrong way to fix that. Let's try and get over to the bright side. I'm wasting a little bit of fuel here. Now the key here is the same as it always is. Basically, we don't know how high the terrain is. Could be as high as 5,000 meters, let's say. Could be pretty high. Somebody mentioned limiting the thrust on the engine. We're not going to do that until we've killed horizontal velocity. I don't think I'll do that anyway. Uh, Duna, probably not a good idea to limit the thrust on your engine unless you're way overpowered. All right, I'm going to deploy the parachute now. Pre-deploy. It's not at the pressure it needs to be at in order to deploy. And I'm also going to start slowing down. You don't need to. Uh, could wait until you see what the parachute does. But you can see our impact situation here. You can adjust the out minimum altitude, uh, not the, the full deployment altitude and minimum pressure. I don't usually use parachutes when landing on Duna, so I haven't really experimented with that very much. Usually, as I'm already doing right now, I use main force. Okay, we've got that parachute deployment. Let's see what it does. It's probably not decelerating us fast enough. I never feel like they do on Duna. Once you're under about 100 meters per second, it should be parachute safe, but let's... Yeah, we're parachute safe. Alright. Okay, now the parachute's deployed. 
and we just need to use the token amount of thrust to see if we can slow down to a safe vertical descent. Try to see where our shadow is. There it is. Okay, well we started we started to go up, so the parachute uh, decided to give us a miss. So we'll just use thrust on the way down here and plop. Okay, bit of an angular surface. Oh, I forgot to do one of the GUI experiments on the way down. Sort of busy at that point. Okay, uh, transmit that from the Duna Midlands. Okay. Where is our thermometer? Transmit that as well. Our contract is fulfilled. And now, uh, I guess we'll do a little bit of a... Yeah, I guess we'll just do a little bit of a hop to... Observe mystery goo in flight. Transmit that. Yep. And we'll log temperature as well. Transmit that. Ah, didn't do it. Okay, there we go. And we'll keep this on the surface of Duna. Okay, back on the surface. No worries. And contract fulfilled. Let's go back to the Space Center. Now we have a whole 604,000 funds. We've got 188 science, uh, 420,000. Maybe I can work with 30 parts for a little while. Let's see about our science. Aerodynamics and wheels. Well, we might as well get them. Uh, it's gonna be a while till we save up for the, the, that tier. So let's just fill this out first. Okay. Any parts that we need to pick up? Well, if we're going to be limited in our part number, maybe the 2.5 meter parts will be valuable. Just saw the Skipper and Poodle do their business in the sandbox mode. All right, well, uh, now maybe we should save up. Let, let's see our contracts before we unlock parts. Let's see. Oh, now they give me science data from space around Duna. Ha. Huh. Well, explore Eve. Yeah. Explore Gilly sort of goes with that. Explore Jewel is pretty straightforward. Sure. Not big on the rocket test. Perform temperature scans in specific locations around Duna. Let's hold off on those. Those are a little bit more adventurous. I've, I, we've done enough of Duna for a little while. Let's focus on Eve and Jewel, perhaps. Talk about those a bit. Planet Flag on Minmus. Have we, have we done that yet? Hold on, let me see what man missions we've done. So, EVA reports. We haven't actually landed a Kerbal on the moon, have we? Or Minmus. Okay, so that's something else we need to aim for. Alright, so plant a flag on Minmus. They're giving us six years to do it. Let's uh, let's have a plant a flag on Duna goal as well. Alright, so I'll think about these. And, well, if we got a plant a flag on Duna, I guess we can transmit or recover science from Duna. Alright. So these are our contracts. The most immediate one seems to be the Minmus one, and then the manned mission to Duna. But we could probably get away with uh, sending the Eve, Gilly, and Jewel stuff first anyway. So yeah, I'll think about what kind of craft we need for this sort of thing, and whether we need to unlock more parts. But with that, uh, th these are our goals. And so I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.